Coming your way on the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Sr. Going to take all of your questions from our loyal subscribers talking about all things 49ers. We go live, by the way, every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific. This is where we answer all of your questions, so make sure you subscribe so that you can join our live shows, and therefore, anytime we push out a video, you will be notified. Start off the mailbag with this question coming in from Chua Lore. Do you think the 49ers address center next year in the draft? How many picks do the Niners have next year? I don't know off the top of my head how many picks the Niners have next year. I do know that they don't have a first-round pick until 2024 because they mortgaged that away to draft Trey Lance. Do I think the Niners will address center? Do I think they should? Yes. I think the answer to both of those questions, yes. You have Jake Brendel. How is he going to play this year? It's been a long time journeyman, a long time backup. I know Chris Forster, the offensive line coach for San Francisco, who coached Jake Brendel with the Miami Dolphins a couple of years ago, was really high on him. But Alex Mack is a really good player. I don't think that Jake Brendel is anything close. Is he going to start? Is it going to be Daniel Brunskill? That is certainly a position of concern for me. He's going to be competing, Jake Brendel is, with Brunskill, Jason Poe, and Donovan West, the latter two undrafted free agents. That is going to be one of the best training camp battles here coming up in July and August. BK from the Bay is up next. Chase, do you think the 49ers jumped the gun by saying they had it in the budget for Debo and both the contracts and then the market exploded for receivers and for the league totally? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I think that if you signed Debo before the wide receiver market exploded, you could have had him at around $20, $22, $23 million. And now, A.J. Brown per year making $25 million annually. And I think that Debo Samuel is going to go to the contract table and say, I'm more impactful than a lot of these guys who are making in the neighborhood of what I want to make don't offer me anything lower. Do not lowball me. Otherwise, I'm going to dip, and then you're going to have to find your young quarterback a new number one wide receiver because, in my opinion, I think Brandon Ayuk is better as a number two. So, yeah, I think by waiting, they have cost themselves a little bit of money, but historically, this is how the 49ers have done business. They have usually handed out contract extensions, in August and in July, and I expect the same to happen potentially for Debo Samuel and Nick Bosa. Chris Peacock, next up on the docket, nice, very good name. You didn't get me there, just said it because we're having fun. 49ers trade for Joey Bosa to team him up, up, team him up with his brother, Nick Bosa. Then they'll bring the Bosa boom to San Francisco. Chris Peacock, nice. Um, yeah. I don't think that's really possible to a certain degree because Joey Bosa just signed a big contract extension with the Los Angeles Chargers, which interesting though, he does have an out in his contract after I believe the 2022 or 2023 season, so that would allow him to become a free agent. And can you imagine Nick Bosa and Joey Bosa teaming up together? That would form one of the best edge rushing duos in the NFL, not just right now, but in recent memory. I actually think that Nick Bosa is the better player as compared to his older brother. What do you think, though? So to answer your question, Chris, uh, no, I do not think that that is going to be possible. I think the 49ers have let their plans be known by how they've kind of stacked the defensive line, how they've gone after a guy like Kerry Hyder, Kamoko Ture, they traded for a Charles Amenehu, they signed Samson Ebucom, they drafted Drake Jackson. All those guys, cheaper options than Nick Bosa. And it just makes sense financially to have those guys on your team as compared to having two premier edge rushers who demand very high salaries. But who's better, JB for Joey Bosa, NB for Nick Bosa? Let me know in the comment section right now. Anthony N., do you think we can make it all the way this year? I do. This is a really good team. Now, a lot of it is going to hinge on the play of Trey Lance, and I don't even think that he has to do an incredible amount and shoulder an incredible load. I think that Trey Lance just has to be solid. Why? Because there's a good complementary supporting cast around him. This is an offense that's led by Kyle Shanahan, one of the best play callers in the sport, who really found a groove last year after that 3-5 and five start. You have the best left tackle in the game in Trent Williams. And then you look around the offensive side of the ball, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. I like Jawan Jennings as a slot. You drafted Danny Gray. I think this defense could really be the calling card for this team this year. Stacked defensive line, 
One of the better linebacking cores with Aziz Alshire, Fred Warner, and Dre Greenlaw. You have your number one corner in Charvarius Ward. Number two in Emmanuel Mosley. A 2A, 2B guy in Ambry Thomas. And then at that safety spot, opposite of Jimmy Ward, some concerns. But the depth on the defense, especially that defensive line, really, really quality. Lucius, out of all the rookies I personally am most interested in Danny Gray, seems like a slot Marquise Goodwin kind of guy that can easily get open and burn corners. What do you think about Danny Gray? He was my favorite pick in this draft class for San Francisco. I really liked him coming out of SMU. He is really good at picking up yards after the catch, and he's just a really quality player. Now, I want to see him work on his hands. Has to become a little bit more reliable there, but he's really dynamic with catching the ball in and out of traffic and making guys miss and breaking some tackles from time to time. Most importantly, though, some pull-away speed. And you put him in this offense where Kyle Shanahan is going to be able to drum up some creativity. I love this selection. I think he could be a more all-around wide receiver as compared to Marquise Goodwin. I kind of compare him more to an Emmanuel Sanders. Has that burner aspect to his game, but also can play outside, play inside, and just do a little bit more than being a vertical burner like Marquise Goodwin. Make sure you subscribe to us on Colin. It's an audio social podcasting app that's like Twitter Spaces, but even better. And every single Tuesday after our show airs live on YouTube as well as Rumble, we've been going live on Colin, taking all of your calls and also doing segments over there exclusively. You have an opportunity to call into the show to ask me a question or voice your best 49ers takes. Subscribe to us now, chatsports.com slash 49ers Colin. You plug in that link or we have those links available for you in the comment section and the description of this video. Niner faithful with this. Hey Chase, in a dream scenario where Jason Verrett stays healthy and our starting cornerbacks are Ward, Verrett, and Mosley, where do you see this defense ranking throughout the league? Don't forget about Ambry Thomas. He really came on the last month or so of the season. And by bringing back Jason Verrett, that really helps your cornerback depth. You drafted Samuel Womack. You drafted Tariq Castro-Fields. We'll see if Diamador Lenore is able to perform better in training camp in the preseason than he did in OTAs and minicamp where he really, really, where he really struggled. But the depth in the secondary is already better than it was last year, where after Verrett went down, you were kind of screwed and you were trying to find your groove at that cornerback spot for a really long time. And that was a big reason why they started the year three and five. Then some guys started to step up. The defensive line was getting after the quarterback. But this defense, they can be top five, mostly because of that defensive line. Linebacking core, I think, is underrated. One of the better in the league, as I said. And the secondary is much improved from a year ago. Byron McCants, do you think the Niners should go after Sue as another depth piece? No. I don't think they need to. They're already really loaded along the defensive line. And what D'Amico Ryans likes to do is interchange some of his edge rushers and put them in for some NASCAR packages at the defensive tackle spot to exploit some mismatches when you put some faster players from the edge spot at defensive tackle going up against some slower-footed guards. You saw it last year with Eric Armstead, with Arden Key, Samson Ebucom, Charles Amenehu, and also already at defensive tackle, you're trying to see what you have in Javon Kinlaw, Hassan Ridgeway, Kerry Hyder, I think, could play edge as well as defensive tackle. So you really don't need to go after Indomitian Sue on the free agency market. Brutal, will Trey Lance be able to command the huddle? Yeah, why not? I mean, this guy is a good communicator. He is a really hard worker. People have raved about him throughout the offseason already. They said there's a noticeable change in how he carries himself as well as how he's been playing. No concerns about him commanding the huddle. This guy is mature. This guy has leadership qualities. He's a good communicator. If you watch his press conferences, he's also a really likable guy. I was thinking about this the other day, how far we've come with technological advancements, especially when it comes to phones. I didn't graduate high school all that long ago, class of 2010, shout out to Baird Rustin High School. And I perfected when I was at school using those flip phones with the keyboards of texting underneath the desk. And I would watch my teacher like this while sending text messages to my homies. That was my first phone, but also I think about what my parents had, those old school Nokias where they were playing that worm game, and also those uh, Razer phones. Those were some of the first phones that come to my memory. What was your first cell phone? Let me know in the comment section right now. BV50, 
49ers report by Chat Sports. Do you think Aaron Donald and that contract makes it harder to sign Bosa? No, it just makes it more expensive. I think he's going to get about $30 million per year because that's about the asking price of what it's going to take to bring back a player like Bosa. Uh, Aaron Donald became the highest paid non-quarterback in the history of the NFL. And everybody is like, oh my God, these contracts are crazy. They're so expensive now. In like five years, edge rushers might be getting paid 35 to $40 million because these new TV deals and the NFL continues to grow. The viewership continues to expand. They're expanding their global footprint as well by playing all these international games in the UK, Mexico, and beyond. Look, the, 40, uh, the, the 49ers, they're going to have money to pay Nick Bosa and honestly get that contract done earlier as compared to later because if they don't, then you might have to pay Nick Bosa even more than Aaron Donald. Chris, last question of this mailbag. Trade Jimmy Garoppolo to Detroit for Jeff Akuda. Does Detroit need Jimmy Garoppolo? They have Jared Goff, right? And are they going to trade for Jared Goff when they already have a quarterback and give up on a guy who they took in the top five out of Ohio State in the cornerback, Jeff Okuda, who's coming off an Achilles injury? Now, would I be willing to take a bet and a chance on Akuda if maybe he got released, if he suffered another injury next year, he hits the open market? Yeah, but this 49er secondary is in a pretty good spot. So I don't think that the Lions would do that. And I don't think that right now the 49ers actually have the money or the need for Jeff Akuda. Keep in mind, former top five pick, he's due a lot of money on that rookie contract. Before we get out of here on this mailbag, this is why you subscribe to the channel. Love chopping it up and taking all of your questions every single week, a couple times per week right here on the channel. If you want to be a part of the shows like I am as the host and ask me these questions and spew your opinions, let's ride. Hit that red subscribe button right now.